Lester's daisy-like flowers bloom in late summer or early fall and are easy to grow and bloom reliably. They are available in a wide variety of colors and sizes. There is a massive attraction to pollinators due to their brightly colored flowers and they're highly disease resistant. So are asters annuals or perennials. Asters are fall blooming perennials that you will love. They are unique because they start blooming when everything else in the garden is looking tired and shaggy. They score high in the autumn garden because of all the rich colors they come in. When should you plant asters? Plant your asters in the spring to bloom in the fall season. For late season planting, you can purchase them already in bloom for the fall color. The plants will more likely return next year as long as you get them in the ground at least 6 to 8 weeks before freezing begins. Perennial Aster Species You Can Plant in Your Garden Perennial asters from the aster, Symphiotrichum, and Stochesia are all Asteraceae or the daisy family. There are numerous perennial types available with colorful daisy-like blossoms and shrub plants. Aromatic the aromatic aster is a medium-sized native species with a mature height of about 1 to 3 feet and an equal spread. The lower portions turn woody and brown in the fall. The leaves have smooth margins, significant at the bottom and smaller near the top of the stem. Blue Wood Blue Wood, also known as heart-leaved aster, is a native species with a mature height of approximately 2 to 5 feet. The upright stems mature to reddish-brown and are heavily filled with blossoms. Its leaves are prominently serrated and covered in sparse hair. Calico Calico or side flying star is a medium-sized species that generally grows to about 2-3 to three feet tall with an equal width spread. The calico plant has bronze foliage in the fall. Its leaves are roughly textured, narrow, and can be hairy. Its flowers have white rays tinged with purple, measuring a half to one-third of an inch across. The center discs are yellow, maturing to reddish-purple. Frost The frost or hairy aster is a native species that grows to mature dimensions between two and four feet wide. These plants require support as they grow older. The leaves are hairy with a lance shape with slightly smooth margins. The flowers are white race surrounded by pale yellow center discs that mature to a reddish-purple color. New England The New England storm is a tall native species that grows to at least 3 to 6 feet tall with a spread of about 2 to 3 feet wide. It is necessary to stake this type so that it does not fall over as it grows. The flowers measure 1 and a quarter inches wide with yellow center discs. New York the New York aster is a native species that grows up to 3 to 6 feet high and 2 to 3 feet wide. Given the height of the stems, it requires staking. The flowers are deep pink or purple-red clusters in dense panicles. Are aster flowers poisonous? The answer is no they are not. The flowers can be eaten in various ways which include adding them to salads or using them to make a fresh cup of tea. This is due to the aster flower's diaphoretic action when infused in hot water to make tea. What eats aster flowers? This is because these little critters can prove harmful to your aster plants if left undetected over time. Other common aster flower eaters include leafhoppers, leaf miners, soft scales, caterpillars, and thrips. Rabbits are another culprit who finds the texture and taste of aster flowers quite irresistible. Where does the aster flower grow? These plants grow best in well-drained loamy soils that are rich in nutrients and prefer grasslands. Additionally, during the late autumn season, pruning them would be ideal, just as pinching the flowering tips in the spring season will increase their yield. How do you collect aster flower seeds? For aster seed collection, you can opt for one of the following methods. These include stalk harvesting, flower head snipping, or seed head crumbling. To begin the aster flower seed collection, ensure that you put on a pair of garden gloves to avoid mishaps. The stalk harvesting method. To do this, you will be required to cut an entire stalk that embodies blossoms in clusters. Harvesting the seeds before the arrival of the first frost is advised as it will prevent your aster plant from becoming mushy. The flower head snipping method. This 
involves snipping off individual flowers rather than clusters. If you opt for this method, just keep in mind that it may be a little more time-consuming than stock harvesting your aster flower seeds. However, you would have to only pluck the dried flower heads in this case as they become available on the tree. The Seed Head Crumbling Method This will release the seed from the dried flowers which will fall directly into the bag. Be careful to steer clear from fresh blooms when doing this as you wouldn't want to cause any damage to your aster flowers. Conclusion You choose to either grow them afresh each year or leave them in the ground in winter for regrowth in the coming season. Asters are well known for their exceptionally long vase life. It is beautiful to pick them and put them in a vase, allowing them to brighten your house in the fall. If you strip all the leaves below the waterline, thin out the leaves up to the stem a bit more, and add a little vinegar in the water, maximizing the cut flower potential. When arranging your flowers, you can mix the rich purple and magenta colors with leaf flowering types, hydrangeas, sparky, and bright foliage for that perfect combo. If you liked this video don't forget to like and subscribe.